Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, today is going to be a haul video of stuff that I've ordered while I've been on recovery from having my hysterectomy. Um, there's a couple of things that I got um, for Valentine's Day. Um, and then everything else is just stuff that I've picked up. Um, this will be part one just because I have another batch of things coming so there will be a part two um so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those and then I am going to do an update video on how I've been doing since surgery so stay tuned for that so yeah let's jump in if you want to see what I've ordered okay while I've been in bed I'm it's been a week since I had surgery I had surgery on the 24th um of February I've you know been laying in bed watching a lot of YouTube. So I have ordered some things, mostly from Walmart. I have a few other pieces that I got um, from the company's website. And then I'll include the things that I got for Valentine's Day. And then one of the um, items I ordered, it was before surgery. It just took a while to come because it came from the UK. Um, but I ordered a eyeshadow palette when it restocked. So I figured I would just throw everything in and show you again. Like I said in the intro, this is part one. There will be another part coming because I did order a couple of things right at the beginning of the month. Um, so yeah, let's jump in. I'm going to show you, we'll do eyeshadow palettes at the end because I think that'll be the most exciting. But the um, first things, like I ordered, I ordered my own stuff for Valentine's Day this year. Sometimes Mike, my husband, buys me stuff. I'll send him, you know, links, things I like. Sometimes he'll just pick out something on his own. Um, he was transitioning out of the truck, so I just, you know, got his stuff, the girl's stuff, my stuff. I just got everything. Um, I ordered my own stuff this year, so it just depends on the year. So I ended up getting one of the bundles from ColourPop. I got a blush and a highlighter. Um, I remember they launched these, like, heart blushes a couple of years ago, and they, like, sold out immediately. I never got any of those and I kind of like the packaging um, and I haven't really tried ColourPop's powder blush formula. I have a Super Shock but I, and I, I like the heart packaging. I just thought it was cute. So when they relaunched these, um, I decided to get one of the bundles. So I went with the bundle that had the highlighter that I wanted or that I see that seemed like I would get the most use out of and I happened to like the blush. It was just... A little bit cheaper than getting them individually and I've heard that the packaging on these is better because I do remember seeing videos of these original ones and they were like terrible to open and I do have long nails because I have acrylic so this is in the shade sweetheart I don't know if this is the one that's the Dior dupe or it's the one that's a little bit brighter but I liked this kind of lighter like mid-toned pink it's very very light like it looks pretty pigmented right there, but um, it does build up, but you can see it's pretty soft, which I like. I have a lot of like brighter berries and I went through like this phase like during Christmas time where I was all about like red blush. So I like that this is like a true pink. It's a little bit softer. It is buildable. Um, so I like that it's not, you know, bam, pigment in your face. And then the highlighter is in Making Memories. Um, I looked at the brighter pink blush, but I it came with like a pinky highlight, and I don't really wear pinky highlights. This is the more champagne-y one, so I figured um, that this would be a better option just for something I would wear. I have their Super Shocks, but I've never tried like their actual powder highlights, and this is actually the first time I swatched it. I kind of got these things and just put them on my desk, but that's really pretty. Um, it reminds me almost of a like toned down version of Flexitarian almost. So that's nice. So I'm happy with that duo. And then I did pick up an eyeshadow palette um, for Valentine's Day. But we'll, uh, we'll do the eyeshadows at the end. Um, I did get a little bite-sized quad too from e.l.f. But again, I'll, I'll try and do the eyeshadows more towards the end. A, a lot of my pressed powders are old. So I've kind of been on the hunt for some new ones. Like my, um, I love like a lot of Mary Kay stuff, but the powder that I have is super old. It's got to be like 
hating five years, so I need to throw it away. So I ended up picking up Rimmel's um, Stay Matte to try. And then I got CoverGirl's Clean Fresh. This is in the shade 120 Fair. It's just their pressed powder. It comes with a little like puff. I've heard good things and bad things about this line. This doesn't really have a smell. I remember using CoverGirl years ago and their powder we had that really like grandma florally smell. And then this is in shade 011 Creamy Neutral. This has a little bit of like a clean like floral scent, but it's not strong. I've heard good things about this. And like I said, the CoverGirl one I've heard like good and bad. So we'll give it a try. I like Rimmel's Stay Matte and I do like the number seven powder that's like a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury but I don't really have a bunch others um most of my powders are loose and I do tend to reach for pressed a little more just because it's less messy so I figured I would get these and try them like I said my Mary Kay one needs to go in the garbage and then again with Rimmel I ordered most of this stuff on Walmart's website and just had it delivered to the house I've never tried Rimmel's bronzers and this is like a three dollar bronzer mine's in the shade zero to one sunlight um, Emily Noel recommends the Rimmel powder and these bronzers and like I said these are the Rimmel stuff is both like around three dollars so it's the cheapest stuff you can find my Walmart doesn't carry Rimmel in the store anymore so this was something I had to order but I have I'm not able to leave the house much at this point so figured I would give this a try I kind of went back and forth between this and a deeper shade and I, the deeper one I was going to get um, was not in stock when I went to place the order so this is probably a little bit lighter I I like like a heavy bronzer look so but I think this will work it sh as far as I know from what I've read and watched like Rimmel's kind of a buildable formula so there it is right there next to the highlighter I think that'll work I like that it's a little bit glowy like it's not shimmery but it's not like a matte either it says it's waterproof so that's nice so again at some point I'll give that a try and then another thing from Rimmel I got this this is a makeup primer this is the stay matte mine has got to be six years old it doesn't smell um matte primers I will tend to use on my nose I have my skin is dry and dehydrated if you're new if you're not new, then you've heard me talk about this before. And I have a hard time getting makeup to adhere to my nose. And it's one of those things I have to make sure I exfoliate really well. Um, I do get a little oily if I'm going to get oily just around the outside here. So during the summer, I will use a mattifying primer. But my face is small. I have, you know, small nose, like slender face. So I don't need very much, which is why this has lasted me six years. I got it in an Ipsy bag. And it was a full size. It's, it looks just like this, but I figured that it was time to get a new one. So this is going to replace the one that I have. A couple of my primers expired and had to be thrown away. Um, and then I've got a couple, I, I got a couple new concealers because I'm at that point where my powders, some of my powders are getting old. Had my primers expired. Like everything's kind of, I needed replacement things. So this is a replacement. It's really, really good. Really, really cheap. Again, it's like around three bucks. And like I said, it lasted me six years because I generally only use it on my nose and then like on my chin sometimes. And then like in the T-zone, but you just need the smallest amount and it works really, really well. The other mattifying primer I have is from Huda Beauty, but I don't like that one as well. This one does a better job. And so a mattifying primer can help with longevity um, if you're oily and then another option if you don't want to use like an actual face primer you can actually use an eyeshadow primer because most eyeshadow primers are mattifying in nature and that can actually kind of help your makeup stay another route that I will go to if I'm wearing an actual like fuller coverage foundation which I don't do often is I do have the elf gripping primer it's super sticky I don't like using it on my whole face because it's like too tacky and the way I I'm a smear I'm not a stippler and because it's so sticky I, I can't get my foundation to look nice on my whole face with it but that's because of the way I apply but it does work really well on my nose so I do use a gripping super gripping primer on my nose sometimes 
depending on foundation. But anyways, the next thing is an eyeshadow primer. This is the Milani eyeshadow primer. I know Jen loves, she used to be Jen Loves Reviews. She loves this and Emily Noel loves this. I've never tried Milani's eyeshadow primer, so I figured I would get it. I like Ulta Beauty's um, their primer. It's a mattifying primer, um, but it also has a little bit of a tint. What does this look like? This has a little bit of a color. This kind of reminds me of the Ulta Beauty one. Um, I like the MAC Paint Pot. I had to throw mine away because it got super old. Um, has a little bit of a silicone feel. I never squeezed it out of the tube. But this is nice. I've heard that you don't need very much, so that little amount that I squeezed out probably would have been enough for both eyes. Um, I've used Urban Decay's Primer Potion before. That one's good. Um, I have a couple like the NYX Glitter Glue and then the Alamar Tacky Primer um, for glitter glues. Um, my favorite is um, the Gerard Clean Canvas. It's very, very wet, um, concealer-like. It comes in a pot. That's my favorite, and I did purchase a new one of that because mine's almost done. But occasionally I like these more silicone-y ones. This would be a good one to use on your nose just by feel but yeah so figured I would test this out um and then we'll talk about concealers oh I got it did get one more primer I finally got a hold of the halo glow liquid filter from elf I got mine in one fair I was gonna get shade two which is fair light um and I ordered it, it was supposed to come, and then there was a shipping delay, and they canceled the order. So I was actually able to get this, like, same day in Shade Fair. This does have a tint to it, from what I understand. So it's probably as fair as I am, probably better that I got this shade instead of the one that was a little bit darker. I mean, you generally are going to wear this under, like, makeup, so it probably would have been okay, but I don't think this is a bad color for me. And I think this is something that you could do on like a no makeup day just to make, give your skin like a little bit more of a healthy glow. I have an empty box over here, but yeah, I had, I live in Yuma, Arizona and we tend to get stuff very, very late, like as far as new launches of things in store. And so like I had the worst time getting a hold of this. I could have went on Elf's website and ordered it. There isn't much of a smell. It kind of has a little bit of a light chemically smell, but not bad. That's what it looks like upon application. Again, this is in the shade light. My favorite um, product like this is from Becca, the backlight filter. The original one, I had one that I completely used up and I finally opened my second one. I bought a second one when Becca was about to close. So I finally opened it. Usually that Come, comes in a bottle about this size with a pump will last me about two years because again I just need a small amount for my whole face um, so this is what it looks like I just blended it out that's pretty um, I've heard people say this is a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury and then I've watched like um, Teresa's dead she loves Charlotte Tilbury this is not a dupe according to her I'm I'm sure the Charlotte Tilbury one's a little bit better just because it's probably got more skincare in it I do think after my Becca one is done that I probably will get the Charlotte Tilbury one just because that Becca one doesn't exist. Cover, is it, it's either Smashbox or Cover Effects acquired Becca partially so that you can still get some Becca products they sell. They're, they're at Sephora. I can't remember if it's, I'm assuming it's Smashbox. I, I forget which company bought Becca, but you can still get like their under eye corrector that's really popular, some of their highlighters. I don't believe the backlight filter is one of them that's available still. So again, when that one's done, I'll probably get the Charlotte Tilbury one because I did look at that as a replacement um, option, but this doesn't feel bad. So I feel like this is probably a good like alternative, um, but I'm I'm gonna say just by feel, my um, Becca one feels a little bit nicer, but like I said, I'm sure this one isn't bad. So I will try it. I had, like I said, it took me a long time to get a hold of this. You'd think it was made out of gold. Um, okay, and then I got some concealers. The first one, this is like the fourth or fifth one I bought of this. This is the Maybelline um, Instant Eraser. I wear the shade 115. It's a pretty good like match. Um, if I wanted something a little bit more brightening, I would probably go back a couple of shades, but this is a good like perfect match. 
So generally I'll go in with a little bit of this and then a little bit of um, either this e.l.f. one in Fair Warm or I have this ColourPop one that's super light in Fair 05W um, just to brighten up a little bit. But again, this is the like the fifth one I purchased. You can see mine where it's almost out. So I just got a backup of this one. And then I did get another e.l.f. camo concealer. Mine's getting a little bit older, but this shade's a little bit darker. This one is in light sand. So this one I think will be in the same vein of this where this should be like my actual shade. And then this one, um, as you can see, is just a hair lighter. So this would be... I'd go in with like an extra little dollop just to brighten it up because generally I'll conceal and then I'll do a little bit of a lighter concealer just here, like spotlighty under my eyes, nose and forehead for that like spotlight effect. But I just figured I would get another one. I've had concealers last me a really, really long time because again, you don't need very much and I have a small face. So that is all like the boring products see if I can wipe off some of this. So for a quad, I did finally pick up the Bite Size Quad in Cream and Sugar from e.l.f. This one's a really popular one. If I can get it open, I might have to get my tweezers out. I pushed the sticker down under the... There we go. I appreciate the packaging so that, like, you know nobody's opened it, but goodness... It's like trying to open a CD if every, anybody remembers that. Like you've got to have a special tool because they had plastic and then the stickers going all the way around the edge. It's like, it's a CD. We don't need to keep it fresh here. But this is the cream and sugar quad. It's just a neutral quad. So I figured this might be nice because Mike and I do take trips occasionally. And then this I thought would be maybe a nice like everyday one. Um, I don't think these are like the end all be all but they're they're good especially for the price point because I think these are still like three or four bucks so I think they're good for the price point do I think they're the best eyeshadow ever no but especially being drugstore and as affordable as these are I think these are good so um, I have cream and sugar now the other two that I've had for a long time is the pumpkin pumpkin pie so it's just a warm brown um, and then I have the Berry Batty, which is a mauve one. So I figured this also would be a good companion to these. And then another one that I have that I bought a while ago and have never opened. So we'll take the sticker off this. Oh, that like... They've changed... Looks like they changed the sticker because this sticker like goes all the way down if I can get it open. This is the hard part about having acrylic nails. This one has like a blue in it which I thought was kind of fun. I was just, this is something that I added to like Ulta, an Ulta order probably to get free shipping, but this one has three mattes and a blue shimmer. So again, I thought this would be a good companion to the the two that I had it, had initially. I've had this one for a little while. I think this came around Christmas time. This one is in the shade Carnival Candy. So again, you've got the three mattes and the blue, and I'm somebody that I like a pop of, um, if I'm gonna do a neutral eye on the lower lash line, so. That's actually pretty good. So there's the blue. I'm sure their mattes are fine because the mattes and all of the ones I've tried have been decent. So, and it has a little bit of staining, which means you're going to have some longevity. So that's good. So yeah, now I have four of these. I'm kind of an eyeshadow snob. Most of my eyeshadows high end. So I like having some drugstore stuff um, besides ColourPop um, just because I do still film um, like tutorials and stuff occasionally. So now we can get into the palettes. Let me 
wipe that off and you can see there is still a little bit of staining which um, staining can be annoying but staining will be an indication that you can you're gonna have some longevity so it's not always bad so the palette that I got for Valentine's Day we'll do that first and then the other one that I got um, when it restocked and then we'll do the two that I ordered um, on launch I ended up picking up the Nomad the Verona Amore a Morte so the love and death palette I think is what that translates to roughly this is inspired by Romeo and Juliet um, Nomad's palettes are from different parts of the world so Verona in Italy I'm probably sounding like I'm not intelligent but this palette looked really, really pretty. I have one other palette from Nomad. I have the pastel, like the Japanese, the hair Juko. I can't ever pronounce it. It's it's from a city in Japan. It's the pastel one. I had another larger one, and then I had a little like nine pan, but it was like they were like older palettes. So the shimmer formulas in those was just mediocre so I ended up decluttering them I gave them to a friend of mine so she took those so the only other one I have is the pastel one and I just haven't there hasn't been a color story that really jumped out at me I did look at the um the fall palette that they released last year that one um I liked the color story it only had three shimmers um and I've heard good and bad things about that one but that may be one that I pick up later but I really liked the color story on this one um so you got the pinky red side and then the grungy like cool tone side for the death side the shimmers in these looked interesting um Teresa is dead if you follow her this is the shade tragedy she didn't give this palette a great review she had a hard time with some of the shades but there are um actual like this is a duochrome I don't think anything in here is what you would consider a multi-chrome, but I think there's a couple of duo chromes. So that's Tragedy from the Death Side. And then Juliet is this pretty, like, bluey purple. This looks like a duo chrome, like it has a little bit of a shift to it, too. Like a little bit of a lavender shift, the blue undertone. And then, is it Moors? I don't know how you pronounce that. M? I think that's an O. Mars like I said these are all based on like Romeo and Juliet so it's been a very very long time since I've read um I think the last time I read Romeo and Juliet was when I was in high school um it's a gold shade but this is also from the death side so it's super sparkly like I said the um the other palettes that I declared it didn't have great shimmers the Pastelli one has a row of like satin shades and then a row of like toppery shades so that's why I've held on to that palette and it's pretty pigmented for being pastel so that's the gold it's either it looks like an O but it's they're all in cursive so that Mars M-A-R-S or M and then there's comedy from the love side it looks like a red it's definitely got gold shimmer. I can't tell if that shade has a shift. It might have a little bit of an orange shift. Super sparkly though. That's pretty. And then we have Romeo. So that's definitely an O. It's M-O-R-S. Okay. It's bothering me that I didn't know what that word was. Because just looking at the O in Romeo. And then this shade I think has a shift. Again, it's a kind of a pinky red with lavender and it's got sparkles in it and you can see it right there and then cupid cupid was supposed to have some sort of embossing but it, this is a little bit chunkier so i can't even i'll hold the palette up again i can't tell what that looks like that was maybe supposed to be like the old school style cupid with the bow and arrow but because it's such a thick shimmer the image um, this is looks like more of what you would consider a toppery shade. It's like a light pink with a shift, lavender shift. But you can see how sparkly those are. So the shimmers really drew my attention. So there's Cupid. Like you can see there is an image on it, but because it's such a thick shimmer, you can't really... I'm assuming that kind of looks like an old school style Cupid. We're going to go with that, but um, yeah. 
So I'm excited. This is the first time I've swatched it. I don't like doing tons of swash swatches, especially in the mats, because if your hands are not super clean, the oils in your fingers can actually cause hard panning. Um, shimmers tend to be a little bit more emollient, um, so you don't have to worry about that as much, but especially with palettes that have been out for a while, like this launched in February, unless I get specific requests um, to swatch, I generally won't swatch a whole palette. Um, I have had subscribers request and I'm happy to do a swatch video. So if somebody wants to see like swatches of these and a more dedicated video, let me know and I will be happy to do it. Again, this palette's been out for a while, but if somebody wants to see like a two looks video, I would be happy to do that because I am going to try and sit and film some stuff since I'm able to sit up a little bit more. So I'm excited about this. So there's that. And I, this is a permanent palette. This is not a limited edition as far as I know. So I will link this down below because even if it's sold out, they will bring it back. You can sign up to be notified. I think I bought it sometime after launch when it restocked a second time because it sold out um, when it first launched. And then they were able to restock it fairly quickly. I don't think I had to wait. I got it before Valentine's Day and it sat, you know, with everybody's stuff with these kind of on my shelf until Valentine's Day actually came. But yeah, I can't remember if I bought this. I may have got it when it launched initially, but yeah, this is something if it's sold out, they're going to bring it back. It's not a, um, like that haunted palette they had a couple of years ago was limited edition and that one never came back. Um, Cosmic Brushes, the Serenity palette came back in stock. Um, and as I'm filming this, the Muse palette was supposed to come back. Um, I have heard... Like they look similar um, when you look at them online, but I've talked to a couple of influencers and they've told me that they feel like they're different enough that the Muse palette might be something worth picking up later. But this palette's been out for like a year. This was super, super popular last year. Um, it's only $24. Super cheap. It is a UK brand. So shipping, it takes a little bit to come. Um, and I think with the shipping put it in like the $30 range, which I didn't think was bad for it coming overseas. Cause sometimes you can spend like 15 or 20 bucks on shipping, um, from overseas companies, but let's just swatch a couple of shimmers like Opal looks pretty. I have not touched this. Yet. Oh, that's pretty. That, um, you could definitely use that as a highlighter. I had a lady in one of my videos comment telling me that I say um too many times, so I apologize that I do that. I, well, I'd say um while I'm processing thoughts, I think. So that was Opal, Serenity. So if that gets on your nerves, I apologize. I am trying to be more aware of it since somebody pointed it out and then these seem like they're flaky so there's that one you can see where I touched it not flaky flaky they remind me of some of the Too Faced shimmers from the original pumpkin spice palette that I got on QVC the first year I have had requests to do a video on the second slice palette yeah they are it is kind of a flaky formula because you can see so go in with your brush carefully if you end up picking this up that was odyssey and then let's do twilight it's a darker blue i'm somebody that doesn't do super dark looks on the lid but i'm feeling like branching out super sparkly kind of going out of my comfort zone and doing more like deeper lid looks and then ether another one that's a little bit flaky in the pan and I'm not rubbing very hard and these are just one swipe so let me know it's kind of a blue with a purple shift you can see the sparkle on camera but I don't know if how the color is picking up that's a weird angle and then wanderer is kind of an olivey color where am I going to poke you we'll just do that up here so very, very pretty shimmers. This palette was a lot of people's like top palette last year. Those are 
between those and the Nomad ones. Very, very pretty. Again, like I said, some of the shades are on the flaky side, so be careful. Don't dig your brush in too hard. Um, I'm just trying to clean them off and kind of see that blue shade left a little bit of staining, which again, like I told you, is good. Um, it's not good if you're somebody that like the next day isn't going to wear any makeup, so you may have to put some concealer on your lids, but staining will give you some longevity so you can see the staining from all the shades. So I think these are technically vegan. Yeah. Um, Nomad is vegan and cruelty free. So that again is also why you're going to have staining because um, Carmine is crushed up beetles and it's used in pigments for like pigment color in eyeshadows. It's generally, you find it in like reds and purples. So the vegan alternative for it tends to be very staining because it's a dye. So I think some of these are probably considered pressed pigments and not eyeshadows. Does this actually say eyeshadow palette or intense color palette? So that's because those vegan pigments are not deemed eye safe by the FDA in the US. They are actually eye safe in every other place, but the United States, the FDA, fun fact, does not put very high precedence on cosmetics related things. So that's why a lot of vegan stuff is not approved because the FDA just doesn't care enough to take the time to approve it. But if there are vegan pigments, Generally, it's not called an eyeshadow palette. They'll call it um, a pressed pigment palette or like intense color palette. That's the way they get around. Because um, if you put eyeshadow palette on there and there's ingredients that are not eye safe, that you can get in trouble for. So that is why a lot of, and this says color palette also. So you'll have more staining. It's a synthetic dye. Um, Carmine generally doesn't stain as bad, but again, it's a crushed up bug. Not everybody wants that. So these are both. This one is cruelty free. You can be cruelty free and not vegan and have Carmine in the formula. So if you're somebody that doesn't want crushed bugs, just look at the ingredient list because crushing up the beetles is not considered animal cruelty. So you can have a cruelty free palette that does contain carmine. So just be aware. So I got that when this restocked. This is a palette that has gone in and out of stock a bunch and it's another one. You can sign up for email alerts. So if you're interested in this, the Muse palette, this leans very like green and purple. The Muse palette has more pinks and greens, less purples. Um, they look similar to me as far as images, but again, I did talk to a couple of influencers and they felt like they were different enough that if you wanted both, you could get both. And there are discount codes for cosmic brushes. Heather Austin has a code, Angelica Nequist has a code. Um, I think Teresa is dead probably has a code. So I people have codes. Um, again, the, most of those people have Nomad. Batty Bean has a Nomad code. I will try and link people's codes down below. I usually will put either Batty Bean or Angeshka, which is Angelica Nequist's code, in when I order stuff just because it ends up saving the shipping cost at least. 10% usually will cover shipping. So just I will try and link some codes down below for you. And then the last two are from Odin's Eye. Um, they did a three palette, um, series. I don't want to call it a set because you can, well, you can buy them all together or separately. Um, with three different influencers, you have makeup just for fun. Um, she did the Flora palette and then Lauren May Beauty did the Sea Talk palette. Um, Betty Jean, who is also Batty Bean on YouTube, did the Animal Spirit palette. Um, I do have that one coming along with another palette from Odin's Eye that restocked finally, but I, la I ordered these last month during launch. I didn't get all three because I was trying to save some money and I had some money this month, so I ended up getting the third palette because it was still available. So let's look at these. I ordered these before surgery. It, Odin's Eye is a Swedish brand. 
So their shipping doesn't take as long as you would think, but it does take a little bit longer because they are not American based. But the Flora palette is the plant. These are supposed to be like nature spirit themed. So the plant, we'll say plant spirit, the Flora story is green and purple. Um, originally I was just going to get Betty Jean's palette, which is the brightest one out of the three. And that one definitely seems like more of a companion palette because you don't really have blending shades in it. This is the most, I think, um, neutral, user-friendly, more everyday. But if you follow her on YouTube, she tends to do more natural makeup. So this color, the color stories that they all came up with definitely fit them very, very well. So you've got a mauve and some greens and some purples. Very, very pretty. I ha again, I haven't swatched this. I think they all have a multi-chrome. Is Dawn the multi-chrome in this one? I don't know. I don't know how well these are going to because of the staining that is Dawn. And then I'm gonna swatch Magnolia, which is a like lavendery. Odin's Eye, I love their formula. Um, I've gotten into the brand in the last year. So I have the Christmas, is it Christmas morning palette? And then I have Angelica Nyquist's um, collab, the Hella palette. So I'm excited to add these. Um, to the ones I already have. I tend to use my Odin's Eye palettes together. So this is Lush. So there's three of the shimmers. Really, really nice matte formula. Their shadows are very pigmented, easy to blend, and their shimmers are amazing. They generally will do at least one multi-chrome in their palettes. They do a lot of duo chromes, very, very sparkly. And I think these were like 33 a piece. If you get all three of them together, it was a little bit cheaper. As I'm filming this, these palettes are all still available. This palette was low in stock and the bundle had low stock. So if you wanna get them or if you're interested in this one, I would get it sooner than later. Discount codes don't work on the collabs, but if you want anything else on Odin's Eye Palette, like the other palette that I got with Betty Jean's, um, I was able to get some money off of that one because it was a permanent palette, it wasn't a collab. The Sea Talk palette, um, Warren did. If you watch her channel, I will try and link their channels down below. She loves shimmers and she will do all shimmer looks. So like this palette is split half and half. There's five mattes and five shimmers. Lauren's palette has only three mattes and then you have more of a satiny shade and then shimmers. But again, like I said, she likes glitter heavy looks. So that did not surprise me. Um, Electric Kelp is a satin. Um, I've seen it used in the inner corner a lot because it has a little bit of a sheen but it's not a straight up like metallic or glitter. And then what is this? Smoky Pearl. She tried to do like coral and like fish, like bright fish colors and then also like took some inspiration from like sandy shades. So what did I say? Smoky Pearl is like a taupey shimmer. And then we'll do one more. Mermaid Scales, pretty. They're all pretty. And we'll do Ocean Jewel too. It's a really sparkly blue. Like I th That one definitely has like a purple shift to it. That is Ocean Jewel. And then Mermaid Scale is like a turquoise with rainbow glitter. Um, like I said, after watch, like I follow all of their channels already. So I thought that was kind of fun that I knew who they all were. And again, I was not surprised that Lauren's palette was shimmer heavy because of her makeup styles and preferences. She's very much like easy eyeshadow looks, like one and done, maybe adding a second like matte in the outer corner just to deepen things up. So this is very much her. And then when the other palettes come, I will show them in, that's why we're going to do a part two. So yeah, that. Again, we have a little bit of staining, not bad. So that is everything that I got. I apologize that this is kind of a long video. Um, I don't always swatch stuff, so that made it a little bit longer. But yeah, let me know if you wanna see videos on any of these palettes. Um, I think I'll do a three looks, three palette video when I get the third one, um, just for fun. But let me know if you wanna see a standalone video on either of these, I have some ideas. If you want to see a standalone video on 
the Nomad, the Serenity. I have some time since I am at home. Um, Mike has been here with me and we just have the baby. The older two are at my in-laws, so it's a little bit easier to film things right now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and film some things just because I can sit at my desk. The washing off is not going to be fun having to stand in the bathroom, but I'm going to try and film some makeup videos. I do have some new like products, so I could do a first impression video if that's interesting to anybody. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much. Again, make sure you're subscribed. I am going to try and link some things down below. Um, and then I'm going to try and film an update video on the surgery. And yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Hope this wasn't too boring. Let me know if you prefer seeing the swatches like I did today, or if you just want me to hold up products and talk about them, because I can eliminate swatching if nobody cares about that. Or if you like that, then I can do more. Um, so yeah, let me know. Again, I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day, and hopefully I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, everybody.